Well, good evening all. It's Dubious Squirrel here. Uh, I'm going to be casting tonight's match. Uh, Templars versus Critical Damage Unit Alpha. Should be a good game. Yeah, this is a Division E match. Templars currently sitting at second place. Uh, in their division with 17 points and critical damage unit team alpha sitting at four points in fourth place so quite a big difference in terms of how many points they've uh, scored so far this season um, I was chatting to their team leader CDU's team leader crypto last night and he said that they're a relatively new unit they have a lot of new players are in, in there so they're really uh, just getting some training in for the World Series and they hope to improve over time. And best of luck to them. Temple is obviously doing quite well. Only two points behind Toddlers in a mosh pit who are in first place in uh, Division E. So this match they could well take the lead. Well, good evening all. It's Dubious Squirrel here. Uh, I'm going to be casting tonight's match. Uh, Templars versus Critical Damage Unit Alpha. Should be a good game. Yeah, this is a Division E match. Templars currently sitting at second place. Uh, in their division with 17 points and critical damage unit team alpha sitting at four points in fourth place so quite a big difference in terms of how many points they've uh, scored so far this season um i was chatting to their all righty team one is locked Uh, team 2 gets a 5 minute allowance before they have to be locked and then we'll be into the match. So let's go and take a quick look at the map before we begin. I believe I've got this right. Rubellite Oasis. What are we going to see here? Good question, don't know. This is Divi. Um, I really haven't been following the tactics in this division. Uh, obviously Gamma is going to be an early pick for Team 1 and Sigma for Team 2. I would usually expect both teams to push up and take these respective high points. Maybe you would see some trading backwards and forwards across the middle. Uh, there's usually some kind of early push for Theta as well, either to take it or at least deny it. And then Team 2 may make a push for Epsi. And I guess team one for Kappa. There you go, that's my guess. Team two are now locked as well, so we're going to go straight into the match.
hostiles to get in your way. So let's have a look. What have we got on Templar's side? We've got a Vapor Eagle, a Kodiak, a we have gamma. Wolfhound Rifleman, Black Lanner. What's a HLF? I don't Enemy know that one. Where is it? Okay, that's what it is, it's a void. Alright, interesting. Resource point theta is ours. Critical damage unit with an Annie, a Warhammer, a Bushwhacker, a Grasshopper. All good choices. Vulcan 5T, that's my favourite mech. And a K9. Not bad, not bad. So Templar's very quick onto the Theta. They have it full capped. Uh, that's an excellent job. Templar's been very aggressive. Definitely going for a brawl push here. The fight's already kicking off. Itchy and Stardust getting into it. Stardust having to make a run for it. And... Oh my word. Kappa is under enemy control. It's almost too much to follow, definitely a big scrap going on. Stardust has taken serious damage. Tech 49 just took a slap in the face. Critical damage unit trying to make a push down the hill. Uh, looks like Templars are making a run for it now, they're being pushed off their position. But Templars on the high ground behind them. Okay, Tech 49 goes down early. That's not good for Templars. Crypto and the Grasshopper are also heavily damaged, down to 51% now, and he goes down. CDUA definitely with the advantage at the moment though, they, they, could, uh, they could make a push up here onto the high ground and at least pick the Vapor Eagle. We have gained Epsilon! And it looks like that's exactly what they're going to do. Dalen needs to move. He's taking some heavy damage. He's going to go down if he's not careful. Two more down for Templars. They're on the losing side here. They're going to have to play the cap game if they can now. Another brutal scrap going on underneath. Stardust down to 24%, 21%. Mechage has just shut down. That's a bad time to do it. But he is down to 36%. Vamp Hunt goes down. Stardust being chased down, hunted like a dog. Down to 19%, looks like he's just about to die. Yep, there he goes. 
So let's see, we've just got Tropico Thunder left for Templars. Uh, there is a four cap lead to critical damage units, one cap, and they've definitely got the cap advantage, 401 to 267. Can Tropico keep running around and maintain enough caps to get a cap win? And where is he? There he is. Theta is controlled by the enemy. Okay, he could get could get a kill here on the mechage. And he did. He's not. He's not. Oh, he's legged. Good shots by Chuss. The enemy has capped enough resources. We failed. Interesting match. I kind of expected Templars to win that, considering they're so far in the lead in their division, but they didn't. Excellently played by uh, CDU A. Uh, good game, both teams actually. Let's have a quick look at the scores. My overlays are a mess at the moment. I didn't prep properly for this game, so uh, I can't do all of the fancy stuff at the moment because it's misconfigured. But we can certainly take a look at the game scoreboard. And doing so, let's see the K9464 damage, excellent for a light mech. Arctic Cheetah 281, actually pretty good damage spread all the way across from CDUA. Uh, the Bushwhacker down a little bit on the average, but, you know, not too bad, 188. Uh, on the Templars side, what do we have? Rifleman 2C, 472 damage, excellent. Good damage spread across the rest of the team. A little bit low on the Incubus, but considering his loadout, I think he had four medium lasers. I mean, it's, it's decent, and he was playing the cap game. He did pretty well at it, too. And then, of course, Tech 49. Next map, I believe, is uh, Hibernal. Yeah. So let me see, higher place team gets team 1 for drop 1, 2 and 5, so I believe we're good. Both teams getting ready now, let's go and take a look at the map strats. Uh, Hibernal Rift. Definitely one of my more favoured maps. Let me see, someone's trying to get my attention in Discord. Oh, that's an announcement, okay. 
yeah, Hibernal Rift, definitely one of my favorite, more favorite maps. Um, there's usually some good tradey positions to be had up on these high points. And uh, there's fairly standard pushes from both teams' side. I expect one of these teams will probably try for a brawl. Um, CDUA definitely did that on the last map and it worked out for them. Uh, this time I suspect we may see a repeat of that. You can trade across this map. Uh, it's difficult to it's difficult to accept a brawl and win it if you're in a tradey build, and this is quite a small map. So yeah, I think probably a brawl of some sort, maybe a couple of tradey mechs up on the high ground, medium range Dakar stuff, or laser vomit. We'll see. Team one are now locked. Team two with five minutes. It's been a good year since I last cast anything, so I'm a bit out of practice. All right, team two are now locked as well, so I guess we're gonna go straight into the match. Bring up the correct overlay, hit the launch button, and off we go. All right, CDUA, Bushwhacker, Vulcan, Annie, Arctic Cheetah, K9, Kodiak 3, Knight, Gia B. Command coming in. Capture and hold the And Templars point. rocking a Kodiak, Stop. Executioner, Enemy TNS, I'm not familiar with that, I should be really. Hunchbacker, I believe, Javelin, Black Lanner, and an Arctic Cheetah. Yeah, Dakar. Resource point theta is ours. Thanatos, that's what it is. The yeah, large laser. Interesting. So it looks like Templar's taking a more tradey approach to this map, taking the high ground. 
uh, while they have a wolf pack running around capping the outside. It's a good strategy. They have good visibility overview over the map. They could uh, they can see where the enemy is if they try and make any kind of push. And CDUA are balled up in a group, a big group. Looks like they're going to be doing a brawl rush at some point. At least that's what I suspect. Or not. Okay, they're trading. Was she running three rotary AC twos? That's a that's an interesting build for comp. Well, it looks like I'm mistaken then, judging by the the builds for CDUA, they're, they're more configured for trading, the larger mechs at least. I don't really get why they're so balled up like that. They uh, they should be taking a ridge line and spreading out a bit in, a f in order to effectively trade. I mean, looking at these two, they're just traffic jamming on each other, and then you've got the Bushwhacker standing right behind them along with the uh, Arctic Cheetah. They're, they're not doing anything. Uh, but as their team leader said, they are a relatively new team. A lot of their players are, have only been playing a few months, um, if I understand correctly. So it's great to see these new teams coming up in comp, and uh, for me this is really where the fun is in the game. Templars over here with a decent spread. Trading across onto Theta. Crypto taking heavy damage in the Kodiak. He may be a little bit too far forwards there. Because they're triangulating fire enemies, he's going to need to back off or die if he's not careful. We have gained Epsilon. Good strike. Malistrix has taken heavy damage in the Kodiak 3. Looks like the night is hammering him from the side over there. CDUA now attempting to push across. Could well be that they smell blood in the water, certainly with Kodiak 3. Kodiak versus Kodiak here. Resource point theta is ours. My god, this is hectic. <laughs> Carnage going on at the bottom here. First death, Malistrix in the Kodiak 3. Lots of other heavily damaged mechs. Yep, there goes Fem Hunt. Uh, Dalen's in trouble. CDU uh, have got several, well, three heavily damaged mechs. But they seem to be winning the fight at the moment. Only just. Actually, still pretty even. Templar's backing off now. Looks like they're going to uh, play the cap game if they're able. What have I got left? Hunchback Javelin, Black Lanner, I think, and uh, Arctic Cheetah. Yeah, this is this is good for running around the map and uh, trying to take caps. They're definitely quicker than the majority of what CDU have left. Actually. Yeah, CDU's Arctic Chi is heavily damaged and their K9 is pretty fresh. The Vulcan is heavily damaged. Mm, interesting. We've captured resource point Sigma. Theta is controlled by the enemy. Itchy about to go down. 
That's a good pick. Now Ravi and the K9's in trouble. 2v1's not a good place to be. It's too late for him to escape as well, but he does have some backup from Major Party up there in the bushwhacker. Hammering away with those rotaries. <laughs> oh my word. Templars now back with the advantage. It looks like they're going to win on caps before the end of the match. We've gathered enough resources. This triumph will provide us huge tactical benefits. That was a great match, actually. I enjoyed watching that. Damn, that was good. All right, let's have a quick look at the scores. Uh, Chatty for Templars in the hedge, Hunchback did very well, 685 damage. Otherwise a good damage spread across the whole team. Kodiak did well, 500. Uh, any other notables? They all, they all scored solidly. And uh, for CDU, let me see who's the top fella. The Annie, 541 damage, yep. Uh, the Kodiak did 306. Otherwise, decent damage spread. No weak performances here. Very strong both teams. That was a really close match. I thought CDU had it for a while. But then uh, Templars backed off and regrouped and started the cap game and, uh, yep, they carried it. So, next map is Tourmaline. Yep, let me do my stuff. All right, team swaps, Tomlin Desert set. All right, let's take a look at the map, Tomlin Desert. This is quite a big map. I'm definitely expecting more of a tradey game on this one. Uh, the spawn points, if these are accurate now, I can't remember whether it was this map or not, but they're kind of they're, they're kind of silly now. They're really super bunched up, so there's there's no initial strategy in terms of where you load your forces and drop from. You can, you can take any of those and you're pretty much in the same place. Obviously Kappa and Epsilon are going to be the early picks for Team 1 and Team 2. Uh, I'd expect some sort of presence from both teams in Theta. Now whether either team decides to push around the outside for uh, Gamma and Sigma remains to be seen. I think uh, Team 2 has advantage 
when, uh, hang on, no, that's wrong. Team one. Oh, I don't know. I think team one can get to gamma slightly quicker, but uh, team two has a better overwatch position. Damn it. Up here. Wow, I'm bad at this map stuff. Yep, I really don't know. Anyway, to conclude, this is a longer range map. I expect a bit more sniping and trading, maybe a wolf pack running around for the outside caps. Uh, and that's it. Both teams still getting ready, neither team are locked yet. So just to recount for anyone that missed the first drop um, on the stream, so far it's one game each. Uh, CDUA took the first game and then Templars uh, played excellently just now and took the second game on caps. So it's still all to play for, three maps remaining. CDU have a pilot they, uh, that just crashed, so they're dealing with that at the moment. Looks like Crypto's just disconnected, or crashed, maybe I'm not sure what's going on here. Crypto crashed as well, oh <laughs> god, they've had two crashes now. So we're going to have to be patient for a while while they sort this out. I guess I need to kick uh, Crypto as well. All right, 
CDU have entirely left the, the, the lobby because they had a couple of crashes and uh, they've decided the best way for them to deal with it is to uh, get out, reform a group and then have me invite them back all at once, which isn't a bad idea. So I'm just going to give them a few minutes to deal with that. No doubt people are restarting PCs and French frantically punching their keyboards and all that good stuff. One win each so far, still three maps to go, everything to play for. If Templars win this, uh, they could take first spot in Division E, which would be great for them. And of course CDUA also want to win. I don't think they can progress any spots up their division, but uh, it would be nice to pull a win out of the bag, certainly. As I mentioned earlier, uh, I was talking to Crypto last night and he said uh, Critical Damage Unit are, their Alpha team is a relatively new team. I think they've only got two fairly veteran players and the rest of their squad is uh, younger players. They've only been playing three months, so I'm led to believe. So they're, they're really just uh, getting some good training in here, relatively new team. It's great to see new teams coming in. Uh, I really encourage people to get into this. Um, from my point of view, I think competitive play is where a lot of the fun is in this game. So if you're on the fence about it, get some friends together, form a team, come and join us, have some fun. There we go. CDU are back on team one side. Hopefully they can get locked up quickly and we can progress. I'll just take another quick look at the map as I mentioned earlier. Uh, this is quite a wide spaced map. I'm expecting some snipey long range tradey stuff going on and probably a few lights running around the outside trying to cap. Most likely uh, the battle is going to commence somewhere around Theta and Delta 4 to Delta 6 to Fox 6 to Fox 4, you know, that, that square in the middle. But we'll see. CDU already nearly locked. Just one of their pilots needs to ready up. And on a side note, is anyone following the football at the moment? There's a big match for England tomorrow, England versus Italy. I'm looking forward to that.
Team 1 have finally locked. Good job, now it's Team 2's turn. See Backy there in comments in Twitch saying BWC are forming a team for uh, CS 2021. Excellent, good to hear it. Hopefully we'll have some new teams popping into that series. It's, it's like the big tournament for the year in the MWO community. And there are some really good rewards this year. In fact, I was looking at an infographic a little while ago. It says that the I think 500 top teams get uh, a pretty decent reward. I can't remember what it is, but I'm not even sure if we'll have 500 teams, to be honest. But basically everyone who enters this tournament is going to get some kind of reward. And then, of course, uh, you get top 30 and top 12. You know, the higher you progress up the tournament, the higher you finish, the more rewards you get. So that's nice. Both teams locked. All right, let's go. So CDU with a Direwolf Arctic Cheetah Commando 1D Grasshopper Vulcan Night Gear and Annie 1A. Under enemy control. We have gained Epsilon. Definitely gonna be some tradey mix in there. Let's see what the builds are. Direwolf Decker. Annie LB10, kind of medium range, okay. Oops. That was the wrong button. Theta is controlled by the enemy. Templar's onto Theta very early. Uh, Templar's running a Black Glanner, Incubus, Commando, Rifleman, Roughneck, Kodiak 3, and uh, what's the other one? Madcap Mark 2C. Right, an early scrap here developing on, developing on Theta, just uh, as I suspected it would. Both teams want to take that central point. Templars now taking Gamma, giving them a three point cap lead. And that does build up over time. They won on caps in the last drop. Definitely more spread out than. Uh, CDU. CDU very bunched up. I wonder if they're going to try and push in.
Mech is trying to cap or at least decap, taking heavy damage in the process. Okay, they've got the cap. Yeah, it's a good time to get off. Crypto taking damage already, 71%. That's good on armor. Oh, maybe not 52. Wow, he's getting slapped in the face. And it's also, it's all coming from this sneaky rifleman 2C up here. <laughs> That's a great place, actually. It's uh, it's a pain in the ass, but it's a, it's a good place. Itchy being super brave here. I'm not sure how advisable that is. He's taking damage from both sides. I'd, I'd say he needs to back out of there if he can. Mekic now taking on the roughneck in his Vulcan. Playing the... Uh, Circle strafe tactic. They've taken Epsilon. Itchy playing hyper aggressive, but he's he's being punished for it. He's taken a lot of damage here. He's in trouble now. That rifleman just laying down so much damage, farming away. I bet he's going to have great score at the end of this. Itchy going back in again. Looks like he's been legged and he's down, yeah. Also major party down in the grasshopper. Not going CDU's way this match. They now have five mechs down, only two left. I'd say Templars are probably going to win this one. Templars retaking Theta for a four cap. Chos making his last stand over here in the night gear. Those commanders are so difficult to kill. For such a small mech, uh, a light mech, they're incredibly tanky. And that's not really about armor, it's about the amazing hit points. No, not hit points, I mean... Uh, yeah, hit boxes, there you go. Ravi way over here in the in his commando. Could have used some help there from him earlier. He's running around now trying to escape. I'm not sure there's a great deal of point to this because they only have one cap point, which is Sigma. So he's uh, prolonging the game, but that's his prerogative. It's like an episode of Benny Hill. <laughs> I don't know if anyone remembers that program or not. But... Yeah, this is what I was saying about the commandos. They're very difficult to kill. All you've got to do is keep on the move. I mean, this guy's being chased by three mechs. And they're slowly whittling him down, but uh, it's no easy job. Ravi giving a good account of himself, not making it easy. But he finally goes the down. Has enough resources. We've failed. Well played both teams, of course Templars won the engagement in the end, so I think uh, superior positioning. That overwatch uh, position from their rifleman was excellent. So let's see, yeah, 
Kodiak 3, 947 damage, very nice. Rifleman 2C, 760 damage. I thought he was going to have high damage and he didn't disappoint. And then decent damage spread across the rest of the team. Roughneck did well. Uh, Madcap Mark 2C did well, yep, good job. So CDU, what did they get? Their highest scorer was the Annie 1A, 441 respectable. Uh, the Vulcan 5T did well, 225. And then a decent spread from the rest of the team. No real weaknesses there. I think their positioning is letting them down. They they seem to have a habit of balling up. Um, and, I don't know, just hanging around together a bit too much. You need to spread out, especially on these larger maps. Try and set up triangul triangulations. Uh, Crossfire on the enemy. But, uh, anyway, lessons to learn for the future. Okay, next map is Grimplexus. And consulting the rules, both teams stay on the same side for this drop. And then there's a final team swap for the final map. Okay, that's good. Team one already in the green and locked. giving Team 2 five minutes. So let's take a quick look at the map. Another quite widely spaced map. Uh, let me see. Alpha once again, I think is going to be a point of contention. Both teams will want to keep, uh, take that or try and deny it to the enemy. Actually, quite often on this map, uh, you see a left push from either one or both teams. Uh, Kappa's good to take early, but then is often ignored because the concentration of cap points is over towards the, uh, the right-hand side of the map as I'm looking at it here. So Gamma, Epsi, and Sigma, and Theta. I mean, when I'm looking at this from a team leader's point of view or trying to come up with some kind of strategy, I usually like to think about keeping a triangle of cap points. So you you have to try and guarantee that you've got the cap advantage while not giving up too much. I mean, from team one side, that may be Theta, and Epsilon, and Gamma. So you can take Gamma, that's towards your backfield, so you can usually take that early on and then just leave it. And then the fight is over Theta and Epsilon. But we'll see. Uh, again, this is quite a large map. I'd expect more of a tradie game than brawling. There's probably going to be wolf packs running around doing, uh, doing light things. Uh, I don't really have much more to say on that. So Templars are still getting ready. Let me check Twitch. Yeah, Ash confirming what, uh, what I already said. All who enter win. Yeah, everyone's going to get a prize, so that's excellent. That's a really nice incentive for people to get in and form teams. And uh, I hope to see a lot of new teams this year. Really looking forward to it. Uh, Yiran Kiran Yagami is asking what the score is. Uh, the score is currently two drops 
to Templars and one drop to CDUA. I think, did I get that right? Yes, I did. So if CDUA win the next couple of drops, they could win the match. If they lose this one, they're not going to win the match, but they can still pick up a couple of points. And that's all good. So yeah, it's still all to play for. Certainly not over yet. Looks like CDU are suffering a lot of crashes tonight. Now we have Ravi, who's uh, just crashed. Better take a note of his name in case I have to reinvite him. Yeah, I'm trying to re-invite this player, Ravi, who just dropped, but it looks like he's had a proper crash because he's uh, showing us offline at the moment. So apologies, folks. There's going to be a delay before we get back into the next drop. Hopefully it won't be too long. So yeah, Templars with 17 points in Division E, CDUA with 4 points in Division E. If Templars, uh, Templars have already scored 2 points, taking them up to 19, that makes them uh, joint first place with Toddlers in a mosh pit in their division. Uh, of course, I believe Toddlers are going to play tonight as well. Uh, so they'll be wanting to score as many points as possible. Because there's only two points between Templars and Toddlers. For Division E, for, for the top spot, it's still all to play for. Very close.
their pilot, CDU's pilot, that dropped, uh, apparently he's still offline and he's off Discord as well. There is a storm in the back mountain of Virginia. All right, that's not good. So if he lives in that area, it may be uh, a power outage, could be anything really. Hopefully he's okay. Looks like uh, CDU are now trying to track down another pilot. They say they're going to have a stand-in pilot ready in three minutes. So yeah, sorry for the delay, folks, but uh, we really want to get this match played out properly. Uh, I think it's worth waiting a few minutes for that. Both teams obviously want to play. And uh, good on them for that. So yeah, we're just going to be patient. Okay, Ravi's back, so I can send him an invite now. That's good news. Invite sent. And Ravi's back. Excellent. Team one locked. Good job. Team two are green and locked. So we're good to go. Finally, we're going to get into the next drop. Let's go. Chew it, Punchy. Oh, my overlays are messed up. I do apologize. I can just see the graphic at the bottom there showing the wrong teams. I prepared badly for this, so yeah, my fault. But this is about the two teams that are playing CDU versus Templars down to the final two drops now. Let's have a look at what CDU are bringing to the field. Direwolf, Annie, Grasshopper, Warhammer. And Commando 1D and Vulcan 5T. I believe this is similar to what they brought last match. Yeah, same X, same builds, I think. Uh, grasshoppers. Fairly standard laser vomit long range ish thing. Alright, good. And Templars with their light squad making early push for Theta again. They're going to take that important cap very early on. Uh, looks like there's no flank from Templars this time. Critical damage taking Kappa. 
Command confirming that we have possession of Kappa. Uh, the rest of the Templars are in a Arctic Cheat and Niger Executioner Rifleman. Uh, is that an assassin? Yeah, I think so. Black Lana. So both teams in similar drops to what they took on the last map. They've taken Epsilon. Both teams with two cap points. Could well be a fight brewing here on Theta. Definitely some trading going on. Mekage and the Vulcan's already taken some. Some damage there, 78 percent. Enemy forces have Sigma. Yep, some fairly accurate trading taking place here. A die wolf pumping out his AC2s. It's amazing the amount of damage you can get out of that mech, especially at these kind of ranges. Crypto's taking heavy damage though. Yeah, one of his torsos is messed up. Hitchy, uh, trying to play the squirrel game. It looks like he's shut down and now he's gonna pay the price for it. That's not a good thing. Uh, you cannot afford to shut down and you've always got to be on the move in these Vulcans uh, and Incubus and all the light makes you... That's it. Move or die, basically. Anytime you shut down... Oh! Yeah, they pushed in too early, I think, with those two lights. What they're doing over there, trying to take on those two heavies on their own, I don't know, it was a brave move, it didn't work out. But they certainly did a decent amount of damage to Melly Strix before they went down, so good on them. Crypto goes down. Chuss is, uh, Chuss is in trouble. This is a complex fight, and I'm not entirely sure where to look. Major party goes down in the Grasshopper, not looking good now for CDU. They've yet to score a uh, secure a single kill. Could be a kill on Maelstrix, yep, good job Ravi. Keep moving buddy, don't stop. If you can shut down the uh, Rifleman there. Could get a kill, but uh. Theta is controlled by the enemy. Ah, gotta be careful, dude. No, he's late. Alright, it's over. The enemy has capped enough resources. We've failed. Well, good play. Good effort. <coughs> Templars definitely took took the field there. A lot of fairly fresh mix still. Let's have a look at the scores. Uh, Templars top scorer, Rifleman 2C, 784. Yeah, another good game for the Rifleman. Uh, good damage spread across the rest of the team. The Cheetah didn't do amazingly, but he still picked up a kill, so all good. Um, CDU, what did they do? Actually, pretty good damage spread. Not quite as high as Templar, but uh, no real weaknesses there. 
Uh, of course, the Vulcan 5T was the first to go down. He shut down, as far as I saw. And then, yeah, he paid the price for doing that. So, yeah, I've got to be careful, folks. Overrides engaged, right? Okay. So the final map is Frozen City and that requires a team swap. So I'm gonna do my gonna do my thing and I will change the scene for a few minutes. Frozen city, minus 45 degrees centigrade. That's pretty frozen. All right, so we'll leave the uh, two teams to try and get themselves sorted out. Let's take a look at the map. Frozen city. Another long-serving map for MechWarrior Online. I think we've probably all played this map to death by now. It's still a pretty good map. Lots can happen here. Uh, I'd say, of course, Gamma and Sigma for both teams. Team 1, Gamma. Team 2, Sigma. They're going to be early picks. And then... I'd expect some kind of push onto Theta. I wouldn't commit the whole team onto it, but certainly it's worth trying to take or deny. Team 2 side Kappa is a good one, and Team 1 side obviously Epsilon. So there you go. I'd expect Team 2 to focus on keeping Sigma and Kappa while fighting over Theta, and Team 1 to do the same, Gamma and Epsilon while fighting over Theta. Often a lot of trading across the open here. Uh, the occasional flank manoeuvre. Lots of arrows. Completely meaningless. But I think you get the general gist of it. Of course, you, we could see uh, just an all-out brawl push. Not an amazing thing to do, especially with all this... with all this uh, open ground in the middle here. I mean, if you're trying to push into a, an entrenched uh, opponent with cover, it can be can be brutal trying to get across this gap, but it's not impossible. So let's see. Anyway, Team 1 is locked. Team 1 this time as Templars. And Tech 49 saying that they're locked and ready to go. Got myself a beer on the go now, that's always good. Friday night beer. Oh no, hang on, Saturday night beer. There you go. Even better. Team 2 now all green. Should be locked any moment now. And they're locked. Alright, let's go. Final drop of the night. Frozen City.
men coming in. Capture and hold the resource point. Stop any hostiles that get in your way. So what do we have? Templars running a light pack of a Black Lanner, Arctic Cheetah and Javelin. And then their fatty squad. What have they got? Victor, Roughneck. Yeah, had to check Thanatos. We have Gamma. Resource point Theta is out. Oh, interesting build on the Victor. I wouldn't normally run Gauss on that, but uh, okay. What about Templars? Grasshopper, any 1A? Hunchback. What are you running, Hunchback? Kappa is under enemy control. Cheetah and Vulcan. And Komodo. Alright. So, once again, Templars with the early cap on Theta, and it's a full cap as well. Very good start for them, certainly in terms of caps. And of course they're holding uh, Gamma and Epsi, just as I expected. CDU once again very balled up down here. Um, I'm not sure what their plan is, but uh, yeah, they need to put it into action. Looks like they're <laughs> tripping over each other, <laughs> trying to push up and to the right, get some cover in the buildings. I mean, it's not a bad thing to do. Very long range, not really worth trading at this kind of range. But they've certainly got an opportunity here to push up through the buildings or maintaining cover. Uh, and then the fight begins in earnest. Of course, Templars have seen this coming. Coming, uh, they've yeah, they've seen this coming, and they're repositioning themselves. Good spread across here in the buildings. Yeah, I like this. Not certain what Ravi's up to. He's trying to come up behind them. Uh, if he if he goes for the cap, he's going to give his position away, but that might be okay because they're all pretty engaged up there. Yeah, he's going for the cap. Chatty immediately sees it and comes back in the javelin. In fact, three of them turn around straight away. <laughs> Well, it's a good diversion. I mean, it takes their attention away from the incoming fight. But uh, CDU moving in very slowly, very cautiously. Mechage in the Vulcan has taken significant damage already. Let's check that out. Oof, back damage and red on the armor CT. Got to be careful for the rest of the match. Templars have flanked on the right hand side here, a couple of their lighter mechs, interesting. Ravi still back here trying to cause chaos, keeping the uh, couple of the heavier mechs entertained. And he's going back for the cap, alright. Oh, first victim major party and the grasshopper goes down. Mechage now even more heavily damaged in the Vulcan. I suspect he's going to go down next Ditchy also taking damage. And Chuss goes down in the uh, Hunchback. That was, that was a rough move across the open there. You need to stay near cover in those things. Crypto is now 
are in the crossfire. Got the more pressing fight is over here. Stardust is about to go down to Ravi. Ravi could finally get a kill here. Go on, Ravi. Stardust making a run for it. I don't blame him. Tech 49 heavily damaged as well. There could be a kill here. Oh no, Crypty goes down. Gecko's attack in the Annie. Surely he can get a kill on Vamp Hunt. No, doesn't get the opportunity because he got flanked. Now he's being hunted down by three enemy mechs. Could get the victor before he goes. Yep, good job. Kills the victor. And once again, Ravi is the last mech still alive on the field for CDU, running his circle game. <laughs> Look at him go. It never ceases to amaze me how difficult commandos are to kill. I mean, he's certainly not running around with impunity, but uh, with the entire enemy team shooting at him. <laughs> and uh, he lasted a good 30 seconds there to a minute. I don't know. Anyway, great final drop. Both teams well played. Uh, I think that brings the score to 4-1 to Templars. So CDUA did take a drop, I think it was the first drop they took, with a well-executed brawl push. Um, so well done on that. And of course Templars well played for the remainders. Looking at the scores, Maelstrix did very well, 608 damage, good spread from the rest of the team. Uh, no real mistakes there. And then CDU, I'm not sure what happened. I didn't see what happened to the Grasshopper, but he died very early. He went down for 24 damage. Uh, so, yeah, that's not good. That could have started the ball rolling for their final defeat. Grasshopper's not something you want to lose too early, and definitely not for 24 damage. But these things happen. Uh, apart from that, the Annie 1A did very well, sev uh, 740 damage. And then a decent spread from the rest of the team. So, where does that leave us in Division E? That leaves uh, CDUA with an additional point. They move up to five points, still in last place, but every point is a good one. And, uh, yeah, good on them. They're still training and practicing, uh, bringing their newer pilots up to speed. So hopefully we'll see them back. And uh, improving for the next tournament, which is the World Series. And Templars take an additional four points, moving them up to 21 points in total in Division E. So prior to Toddlers in a Mosh Pits final match, Templars are now in first place in Division E. And it's going to be down to how Toddlers do in their match uh, that's going to determine who takes first place. So yeah, it'll be interesting to watch that game. Uh, finally, I'm casting a match with a uh, level in a couple of hours. That's going to be 8 p.m. UTC, 4 p.m. EDT. Uh, oh no, hang on. No, that's correct, yeah. And that's going to be EMP versus Omen, so I hope you can all come and watch that. That's going to be on MWO Leagues 2 again, so yep, I'll see you there. Back to this match. Uh, well played both teams. It was a pleasure casting it. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I guess we're done. So see ya.